My name is William Courtney. I served as the first U.S. Ambassador in Kazakhstan from 1992 uh, to 1995. Uh, prior to coming to Kazakhstan, I had been a career foreign service officer for the U.S. Department of State and had several experiences that turned out to be relevant for Kazakhstan. Uh, I had served earlier in Brazil, which like Kazakhstan is a very large country, friendly people and lots of natural resources. Second, I had served in Moscow, so I was somewhat familiar with the Soviet repressive uh, apparatus and how this affected people's lives in the Soviet Union. Uh, and then third, I had spent a number of years in U.S.-Soviet nuclear arms negotiations in Geneva, so I had some familiarity with that subject. When we began operation in Kazakhstan, there were two main uncertainties. Uh, first was, uh, would Kazakhstan and the other former Soviet republics remain independent, or would they recombine with Russia? Uh, fortunately, uh, President Boris Yeltsin respected the borders of the former Soviet uh, republics, uh, and so, uh, especially for Kazakhstan, uh, that turned out to be a, a peaceful situation, and Kazakhstan has very quickly decided they wanted to remain an independent uh, state. We had three initial priorities in the embassy. Uh, the first was to work with Kazakhstan uh, to eliminate its uh, nuclear weapons and infrastructure. Kazakhstan had already closed the nuclear weapons test site at Semi uh, before Kazakhstan became independent. Uh, so we worked with Kazakhstan to uh, find ways to eliminate the nuclear weapons infrastructure, including through support from the U.S. Nun Luger program. The second priority was helping Kazakhstan develop its energy resources. Uh, Chevron, a U.S. company, uh, signed the first multi-billion dollar contract anywhere in the former Soviet Union to develop energy resources, and indeed that's still one of the uh, most productive energy investments anywhere in the former Soviet space. And third, uh, we wanted to reach out to civil society in Kazakhstan. I traveled to all but two oblasts in Kazakhstan during my time there. Uh, we met with uh, labor unions, uh, civic groups of all kinds, uh, so that they could have some opportunity to hear about American policy uh, directly from American uh, diplomats. The visits that took place during my time were really quite notable. In 1992, President uh, Nazarbayev came to the United States uh, for meetings with President George H.W. Bush and at that meeting President Nazarbayev agreed to join the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. In 1993 U.S. Vice President Al Gore came to Kazakhstan and during that visit Kazakhstan acceded to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The following year in 1994 President Nazarbayev came to Washington for meetings with President Clinton, and they concluded a strategic partnership arrangement which continues uh, to this day. A uh, personal highlight of my time in Kazakhstan, uh, my son was in a Kazakh language Detsky Sad, or kindergarten. One time, a television journalist from Astankana in Moscow, the main television channel, uh, came to Almaty and interviewed my son. Uh, my son spoke Kazakh. Uh, this was broadcast all over the former Soviet Union. Uh, after that, wherever I went in Kazakhstan, I was a hero, thanks uh, to my son. Um, looking at the progress that Kazakhstan has made since uh, my time there over the almost 25 years, now Kazakhstan has become a strong middle-income country uh, in the world. Uh, if Kazakhstan is able to uh, continue to grow economically, it will emerge as a higher income uh, country. Uh, second, the progress on education in Kazakhstan has been phenomenal. Kazakhstan had a lot of very well educated people when we got there. Uh, for a while it was hard to fund some of that education, but Kazakhstan has given it a lot of emphasis. So now Kazakhstani kids are studying English in school. Uh, there's a Boloshak program which sends a lot of Kazakhstani university students abroad. So when we look ahead, we see Kazakhstan uh, being able to make a, a major contribution uh, to the, the world economy and to itself, not only because of natural resources, but especially because of the educated uh, people uh, in the country. Uh, and finally, the diplomatic progress has been phenomenal as well. Kazakhstan, probably more than any other emerging country in the world, has taken on a significant diplomatic leadership role on the international stage. One example was it chaired the Organization for Security and Cooperation 
uh, in Europe, had chaired Organization for Islamic uh, Conference. Uh, President Nazarbayev proposed the creation of the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures uh, in Asia, and that now has uh, 76 countries. So that's a phenomenal record. And I might add, Kazakhstan gets along well with all of its neighbors, which is not something that one can say about every country in the former Soviet uh, Union. Looking ahead, uh, I think probably more economic reform, privatization of industry will be particularly important to diversify and balance the economy and make it less vulnerable to fluctuations in commodity energy prices. Um, second, we should take a look at the uh, floating of the Tenge. That was a very important economic reform that Kazakhstan made along with Russia and Ukraine. It enables Kazakhstan to allocate resources more efficiently, increases the productivity of the economy. Even though the Tenge was devalued, it's been an important step for Kazakhstan's economic progress ahead. Uh, and finally, uh, with regard to diplomacy, you know, Kazakhstan is now competing to be uh, on the UN Security Council. This is something very worthy. Kazakhstan uh, deserves that. Uh, and the West has an important responsibility to work with Kazakhstan, especially because you know, Kazakhstan is wedged between two giant neighbors, China and Russia. Uh, and with Chinese economic power growing, with Russia's economic power declining a bit, you know, Kazakhstan is going to be in the middle of a changing situation. So it's important for the West to work with Kazakhstan and helping to attract investment and doing other things so that Kazakhstan can balance all those forces. I'd like to offer congratulations to Kazakhstan on 25 years of independence. It's a phenomenal achievement. A lot of people said it couldn't be done, and Kazakhstan has done as well as any country has done in its first 25 years. Thank you.